show is percussion music, because um, that's what Cage did. It's his first sort of entry into music. So that, that this is 1939, late 30s. Um, and we have a few scores here of percussion. Imaginary landscape number one and first construction in metal. Uh, scores that he tried to, he was always trying to break the boundaries of whatever he was doing. So, um, so those scores, uh, he tries to bring in what he calls more new sounds. You know, and he's thinking of uh, futurist and Dada's gestures of like Luigi Russolo, Art of Noise, things like that. He's sort of slightly exposed to these kind of things. So he invents some new instruments. Uh, the water gong, which is this thing that you bang, a gong that you bang underwater, and uh, break drums of a car, and all this, and he brings all these kind of funny extra things. They're all about new technology. So think of an imaginary landscape of future technology. Right, so in 1939, the technology was turntables, sort of whatever he could do with the technology. So he sort of hated the radio. So instead of rejecting the radio, he made a big composition for 12 radios to kind of force that condition on him. So and in the in the 80s, when they had the ghetto blasters and things, you know, he, he did a big piece where everyone had to walk around with these huge boom boxes. So so he's sort of always trying to force this these conditions on himself. worked out that there, there wasn't enough room on the stage for all the dancers and all his percussion equipment, right? So he had to kind of shrink down his presence. So what he noticed is when he stuck all these things in the piano, uh, he said it sounded like a percussion orchestra under the control of one player, one person. So, so he could just use the piano on stage and move over. My thought is that the dance um, also sort of gave Cage a sense that the visual is often more powerful than the musical. And so later when he gets into theatrical things, uh, it's almost because he's, if he's little being quiet in the corner playing music, I don't know, somehow there was an orientation of the arts that he discovered by working with dance so much. Um, that the, the visual, he kept getting pushed aside and being accompaniments to the dance. You know, it was never, Merce Cunningham was never hired to be Cage's accompaniment. It was always the, you know, the music accompanying the dance. So, so there was this sort of hierarchy. So anyway, the prepared piano was sort of like a practical solution to get the music things into a certain part of the stage and let the dancers have the stage. But, you know, and people, people talk about the prepared piano as like vandalising the piano and all this, but it really doesn't hurt the piano. So he's, he had great respect for music. He was just trying to push the boundaries. And what's really beautiful is he used the conditions of music to push the boundaries of a lot of other things. You know, ethical boundaries and, I mean, establishing boundaries of ethics and, and eventually ecological, environmental, all these things. So the show starts within the matrix of music and pushes out to a kind of ethical position in the world, um, the politics of where Cage ends up.